I think that MTV is to content what the iPhone is to technology. They were that big of a deal. What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we're here to talk about one of my personal favorite things ever of all time, MTV. And specifically, what killed MTV? And I already know the number one thing that people are gonna say, you're probably typing it right now, is because they stopped playing music. But actually, that could not possibly be more wrong. That is the exact opposite of what killed MTV, and I'm gonna explain exactly why in this video. In their prime, they were one of, if not maybe the biggest drivers of youth and pop culture with shows like Pimp My Ride, Yo MTV Raps, Headbangers Ball, Punk, Jackass, Viva La Bam, The Osbournes, the list of huge super influential shows they've done goes on and on and on. But in just a few short years, they went from on top of the world to practically irrelevant. So what happened? But first, I wanna thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. If you like your games grimy and gritty, then this one is for you. It is the exact opposite of all those like cutesy, fluffy, simplistic mobile RPGs that you've probably seen. This game is dark, it's super deep, it's actually really, really complex. What I like about this game is, this game is actually gonna make you think about like your party and your gear and your strategy and stuff like that. Right now, gamers can claim free champions and more with Amazon Prime. Log into Raid Shadow Legends and sign up before January 12th to claim 2 million silver and 700 energy. Future drops run through April and include the champions Whisper and Vala along with free shards, XP boosts, legendary artifacts, potions, everything else you need to take on rival summoners. Claim your loot today for Amazon Prime members only. To claim your loot, just install Raid from my links below and follow the instructions inside the game. Go to the video description, click on the special links there, and if you're a new player, you're gonna get 100,000 silver, which is like the in-game currency they use to upgrade stuff, and a free champion called Hexweaver. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here, and remember, the rewards will only be available for the next 30 days. So good luck, and I will see you there. Call your cable company and say I want my they started back in 1981, and I was too young to remember the very beginning. Up until then, music videos weren't really a thing. To get on TV, bands would play live on those like terrible 70s variety show things, or maybe on the late night shows like Johnny Carson or whatever, but it wasn't cool like music videos were. It was really lame and contrived, just nothing cool about it. But then MTV came along and gave artists pretty much free reign with what they wanted to do creatively in the videos. And it was just like this explosion of creativity. I mean, this stuff looks kind of dated and cringy and ridiculous looking at it now with 2020 eyes. But this was like really wild, edgy, cool, experimental stuff when it came out back in the early 80s. So they took a big chance with this crazy new idea for a TV channel and it totally worked. MTV launched the careers of a whole generation of artists which are still pretty much household names. Madonna, Michael Jackson, U2, Guns N' Roses, and really pretty much any other mainstream artist that came up in like the 80s and 90s. So it was all music videos for the first couple years, but that started to change in 1985 when they got acquired by Viacom. That is when they started to do original programming, and that was kind of the beginning of the they don't play music videos anymore kind of thing. The K-I-N-G of the M-I-C, and that's all because of your MTV raps, that is. A couple of the most notable ones, Yo MTV Raps, which was obviously their rap show. This started in 1988, I believe, when rap was really not mainstream like it is now. And this show was actually what got me interested in music as a kid. I was into rap for a couple years before I ever knew that punk or metal or hardcore were a thing. And I think this show was really the biggest gateway to rap for most people in the 80s. They say the 90s are going to be kinder and gentler. They have no idea what we've got planned here. And of course, they had Headbangers Ball for Metal and 120 Minutes for Alternative Rock, both of which, again, were instrumental for getting just really my whole generation of kids into that stuff. But the thing I really fell in love with, which you don't really ever hear people talk about now, is MTV News, and specifically their Week in Rock segment, which in a lot of ways is kind of the template for what people like me or Anthony Fantana or Adam22 are doing now here on YouTube. The Week in Rock. And before I go on, I need to make one really important point here. Yes, MTV did play more music back then, but it was the same 10 or 20 goddamn songs all day. So if you have it in your head that MTV was once this like amazing fertile ground that was shining the spotlight on these underappreciated indie artists and elevating them into the mainstream, <laughs> that is completely wrong. 
That never happened. If you turn on MTV and say 1989, what you would see is New Kids on the Block, Paula Abdul, Vanilla Ice, MC Hammer, and Prince's theme song from the Michael Keaton Batman movie all day long on repeat. Not exactly what most people would think of as great music. It's the New Kids on the Block. Joseph, Jonathan, Jordan, Donnie, and Danny. Who's their number one fan? I'm the number one fan. But all that was about to change in a big way. Which brings us to part two, the turning point from 1992 to roughly 1995. Now, I think people know this, but maybe they don't. So just to be certain, everybody knows what changed everything for MTV, and I think really for like pop culture and content and media in general, was one show. And that show is The Real World, which came out in 1992. This is the true story. True story. Of seven strangers <laughs> picked to live in a loft and have their lives taped to find out what happens <laughs> what? when people stop being polite. Could you get the phone? And start getting real. The real world. And if you've never seen the show, the concept was really simple. Take seven complete strangers, put them in a house, and film everything. It seems super obvious now, but back then, it was honestly revolutionary. Because remember, this was the early 90s when the dominant form of like primetime TV was these terrible, contrived, super corny sitcoms like Silver Spoons or Full House. And then the real world came along and it was everything that those other shows weren't. It was, well, real, or at least kind of real. And it made an immediate huge impact on TV and pop culture. Honestly, I think entertainment has never been the same since then. And in a lot of ways, it also laid the groundwork for social media because what it revealed is that people are kind of interested in the just boring, mundane details of the lives of strangers. We love that shit. Who knew? They followed that up with another show called Road Rules, which started in 1995 and I think wasn't as much of a game changer as the real world was because by then reality TV had already been kind of defined as a thing. Another game changer for MTV at that time was Beavis and Butthead, which started in 1993. If you have seen it that shows basically where a couple cartoon stoners sit on the couch and make fun of music videos. That show was wildly, wildly popular and because of that it ended up actually being a very powerful discovery mechanism for bands, especially metal bands because they talked about like Pantera and Crowbar and Morbid Angel, Death, all these bands that otherwise would never ever have any kind of mainstream attention on them. Bow to me. And so in just a couple years, MTV had made a huge pivot and become way, way bigger than they were when they just played music videos. They were no longer basically like a glorified playlist. Now they were a youth culture lifestyle channel where music was no longer the sole focus. It was still an important part of the channel for sure, but now it was more of like a supporting cast member than the star. So I was actually able to find some data on this. From 1995 to 2000, the amount of music videos played on MTV went down 36.5%. Clearly, the novelty of just showing music videos has worn off. It's required us to reinvent ourselves to a contemporary audience. So let's dig into this a little bit. Why was the music industry so upset about this? Well, it's obvious, because it's free promotion for their product. So of course the music industry would want them to play videos 24-7, but from MTV's perspective, that really wouldn't make a lot of sense. If they're just a glorified playlist, well, anybody could copy that, right? You're not building a brand. That's not a defensible business. Now that whole, you know, slamming, all that, all that crazy mad extra ill. So they were smart not to let the music industry pressure them into that. And another important point is that by 1995, there were at least six other music video channels, which means that A, there were lots and lots of other places where music videos could be played, and B, that made it very clear that MTV had to do something to differentiate themselves from all those competitors. And again, for all of you who are fired up about how they don't play music videos anymore, let me just remind you what they were actually playing. The thong song almost once a fucking day. And so this pivot to a lifestyle channel was 100% a good thing because what they did next laid the foundation for a ton of the pop culture that you probably love today. Around the clock, the music never stops. MTV Music Television. Which brings us to part three, the golden years from roughly 2000 to 2006. And I call this the golden years because for this period of, you know, maybe five or six years, MTV was just absolutely on fucking fire with new formats, new ideas, new production techniques. They were super innovative, super popular, changing culture, and like I said earlier, laying the foundation for, I think, almost everything you see in media today. They did so much shit in this period that there's no way I could possibly cover it all in this video. One of these days, I would love to do videos kind of getting into more detail about some of these shows, but just to kind of touch on some of the highlights. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. 
Welcome to Jackass. First up, the whole like prank stunt kind of category. The big shows there would be Jackass and the spinoff Wild Boys. And if you're watching this, I'm sure you're familiar with those shows. They not only jumpstarted the career of Steve-O and Bam and Johnny Knoxville, but along with Punked and I guess the Tom Green show, really created the template for the whole genre of like prank stunt YouTube channels like Roman Atwood or FouseyTube for better or for worse, because I kind of hate those channels, but we can't deny that they're a big deal. Meet the perfect American family. Jack, stop telling people your audio is going stunt to get into place because you're a fucking loser. And then there was the whole category of following a famous family around kind of shows. With the first one of these being the Osbournes and then Viva La Bam, Bam's Unholy Union, Newlyweds with Nick Lachey and Jessica Simpson, Meet the Barkers with Travis Barker and Shannon Mokler. These shows really deserve like a whole video of their own because the Osbournes was just a huge, huge show that I think did a lot to put like rock culture in the mainstream eye and had a lot to do with the success of the whole like mall screamo kind of scene back then. Bam obviously did a ton for skateboarding and put bands like him and Believer in the spotlight. It wasn't about secret handshakes between managers. No. He was just a random fellow who came on knocking on our door. And in terms of impact and influence, these shows were without a doubt the blueprint for keeping up with the Kardashians. And whether you like that show or not, as I'm sure a lot of you don't, the fact is that it created the biggest celebrities on the planet right now who have pretty much defined like the last decade of popular culture. And I think you can trace all that back to the Osbournes. And there was also True Life, which if you haven't seen it, is kind of a character-driven documentary series, usually about social issues like I'm coming out or I'm driving while black or lifestyle stuff like I'm an MMA fighter or sometimes just <laughs> random bullshit like I live in a brothel or I'm a college baller. And if you're thinking, wow, that sounds a lot like Vice, you would be right because this was definitely Vice before Vice. If these guys don't clean their teeth, it probably means they have smelly balls. And then we have a whole bunch of shows that I'm gonna kind of lump together under the category of proto YouTube because really they were an early example of the kind of, I guess, gimmicky, clickbaity, dumb shit that does really well on YouTube. Only obviously they did it years earlier. Shows like Cribs, Pimp My Ride, Parental Control, Date My Mom, and Fear to name just a few. Room Raiders, the show that gives three <laughs> unsuspecting singles the surprise of their lives. And I also want to point out the like strange number of shows they had around this time in the mid 2000s that involved dating and some kind of motor vehicle like Room Raiders and Tail Daters and my personal favorite, Next. I don't know if I like shopping as much as you. Um, well, that's fine. Everybody has their own hobbies. Be. I'm going to have to say Next. And again, I can't possibly talk about everything they did in this period. I'm leaving a ton of shit out because this was just a crazy like explosion of innovative new ideas coming out of MTV that really changed TV and I think also defined so much of what we would do with social media content over the next decade. But nothing lasts forever and this was no exception. By the end of the 2000s, MTV had kind of lost the magic and started to fall off. Make sure he knows, you know, we're fun. We like to party, not excessively, but you know, we gotta make sure he can throw down with us. So shizzle, a show. Which brings us to part four, the decline from roughly 2006 to today. I'm not sure why, maybe some key executive left or something like that. There's usually some sort of behind the scenes thing that causes something like this. But by 2006 or 2007 or so, it was clear to me that they had lost a step. MTV was definitely still popular, but it wasn't like the center of conversation like it used to be. It no longer felt to me like they were ahead of the culture and lifestyle curve like they used to be. But they hadn't completely fallen off. As a couple examples from 2006 to 2010, they had The Hills, which was super popular and made Lauren Conrad into a star. And for the record, I'm a big LC fan. And it definitely was influential to some extent as far as popularizing the whole like basic white girl from Southern California kind of lifestyle. Does like he did last night? He's a sucky person. He's a sucky person. And they had a few other minor hits like Life of Ryan with Ryan Sheckler and Teen Mom. And I think probably their last like really big, big hit was Jersey Shore, which came out in 2009. And that show was the kind of thing that really put them on the map back in the 90s and 2000s. It was definitely a big hit for them. People were talking about it everywhere in pop culture. But as far as I can remember, that was really the last thing out of MTV that had that kind of like outsized impact on pop culture. But if I'm forgetting something, let me know in the comments. My only rule, never fall in love at the Jersey Shore. Because they're still making tons of stuff. Over the past decade, they've had probably dozens of shows that on paper aren't so different from what they used to do, but for whatever reason are just kind of not really resonating with the culture like they did in their prime. 
Like they have the show Florabama Shore that's basically Jersey Shore only set in the South, like Florida, Alabama. It's been on for years and this is the first time I've heard of it. It's been on for years and I'd never heard about it until I was researching this video. I'm trying to have a good time with my boy. And that's what really blows my mind, that MTV pioneered so, so much of what we do here on YouTube and with social media content in general. Like they laid the blueprint for this shit and yet they completely missed the boat on doing it themselves. They did the Vice thing before Vice with True Life and Made and shows like that, and yet they let Vice take their idea and run with it and build a billion dollar cable network out of it. You ain't ever heard of Big Meat? I, I may have, but... And then you travel around everywhere and learn about different things all over the world. But this is how I learn about it, is by asking. They pioneered the whole like edgy stunt prank kind of thing with Punk and Jackass and Tom Green. But again, instead of taking that and building their own channel with it, they kind of just ignored it and let all these individual creators do it on their own. Anybody that, <laughs> help me, help me, help me, <laughs> please, please, please help me, please help me, please help me. As a fan, it's been frustrating to watch because I feel like now in 2020, MTV is pretty much irrelevant in pop culture. Although to be fair, they did have a good like 20, 25 year reign at the top, which is pretty fucking impressive for a space that moves so fast and changes so quickly. So I gotta give them some credit for that. Which brings us to part five, the legacy. I could go on forever about all the little things that MTV and the shows that I mentioned earlier pioneered and introduced into content and pop culture, for better or worse. Admittedly, sometimes probably for the worse. And if there's interest from you guys, I would love to do that in future videos where I talk about individual shows in more detail. But for now, I will leave it at this. I think that MTV is to content what the iPhone is to technology. They were that big of a deal. Just like the iPhone completely redefined our relationship with technology, MTV did that with content. And in both cases, the things that they introduced, which were revolutionary at the time, are now so ubiquitous and common and universal that we just kind of feel like they were always there and we can't really imagine it being any different. I just wondered, why don't you play music videos anymore? And to specifically address the biggest complaint that I'm sure people are gonna have in the comments, the whole MTV doesn't play music anymore thing, and how that's fucked up because it hurts musicians or whatever. I have two thoughts on that. First of all, you can thank them for putting the whole idea of music videos on the map in the first place. And that is one of the most massive fundamental shifts in music, right up there with like the introduction of the MP3 and streaming and all that stuff. They gave you the most powerful marketing tool that probably musicians will ever have. Should we all preserve your precious sleepover moments spent watching promotional material from record labels? And second, the fact that they play less music doesn't even matter to like 99.9% .9 of artists because there was never a chance in hell that they would ever end up on MTV even when they did play music. Like I said, the reality is that they played MC Hammer and the Thong Song 24-7, aside from the couple hours a week at 2 a.m. that they gave to Headbangers Ball in 120 minutes. And as much as I love them, even those shows were completely dominated by mostly whack major label bands. So I think a lot of people are nostalgic for a thing that honestly never really existed. And remember, once MTV popularized the idea of music videos, there were at least a dozen other music video channels on TV. So it's not like music videos weren't being played somewhere. MTV alone had like four or five other channels. There was Fuse, Much Music, tons of different channels, which in total played more music videos than MTV as a single channel ever possibly could. And as a viewer, it's the same thing. You have YouTube, what do you need MTV for? Having access to essentially any music video ever recorded at your fingertips is way cooler than relying on some MTV executive to like spoon feed you something cool once a day, if you're lucky. So there's really no reason why you should cry about how you missed back when MTV still played videos. The world we live in now is just better for everybody, but especially bands. I mean, look, you can film a video on your phone for $0, put that up on Instagram, and Facebook and YouTube for the whole world to see for free. There's no more gatekeepers like there were back then when your fate was in the hands of whoever decided what 20 videos would be on the Headbangers Ball that week. Now it's exactly the way that it should have been all along. Your future as an artist is in your hands. Whether you succeed or fail depends completely on you, on how good you are and how hard you work. Why doesn't MTV play music videos anymore? And here's the kicker, that complaint is literally old enough to drive a car by now. 
All right, my friends, that is my opinion on what killed MTV. The fact that by the late 2000s, they just kind of lost touch with pop culture. Maybe you've already typed some angry comment about how they don't play videos anymore and reality TV is trash, but I would like to hear from somebody that loves that stuff as much as I do, especially next, tail daters, room raiders. I also wanna thank everyone who supports me on Patreon at the true cult level or above because of you guys that I'm finally able to get this podcast off the ground. Thank you to my producer and editor, Deanna Chapman, who I am able to hire thanks to the patrons. So thank you guys, I'm very excited to get that off the ground. There's a link to my Patreon in the description. There's also a link to the podcast. First one is out now, new one coming out every Monday. And with that, I'm gonna sign off for now, but I will see you next time.